it, it, will, it will be just very nice, slow, willing. It doesn't have to be fast forward motion. It can be slow. There. Maybe I'll say step ahead, lengthen up, step under. Oh, that's not it. That would get me bucked off. So in other words, if she stops and puts weight on the front legs, think about that. But she'd probably be in a position to physically buck. Mentally, they might think about bucking or kicking, same sort of thing. But if I could keep her walking forward, she probably wouldn't even think about bucking. It's so important. I'm just going to bring that pad up. And she's a little nervous. And see here, she's sort of coming back a little bit. But maybe I'll just put it up. Just adjust and modify what I'm doing a little bit, walk her forward. I don't want to make a big deal of it. She, she was flinchy, but we'll see what we can do. We'll see if we can improve that a little bit. Forward on, stand tall, lead ahead. It's nice. Take that pad off. Another way to present the idea might be direct connection to the halter. Lead, lift, bump with the pad a little. Lead, lift, bump. See her park out. What that meant is she was slightly stuck. She, she was so flinchy that her hind legs couldn't work. Her abdomen got tight and she couldn't move the hind legs forward. It's funny. It's not really funny, but it's just funny to think that a horse is so flinchy that they can't operate correctly with their hind end. Ready? That's better, pad up. Walk away. I still get a little mini hind quarters arc or cross or disengage. You see that? But it's not fast. I'm not necessarily trying to go quickly with the hind quarters. Slow hind quarter stepping across, offsetting. Here we go, one more time. And maybe I'll just put, just put a little nice contact on her and just let her carry that pad. See, she wants to stop because she's tense and she's tight and she goes, I, I can't. I can't go forward because I'm flinching. But in reality, what will get her to stop flinching? Forward and relaxation or vice versa. She's got to get there. Forward's the answer. This forward is the answer. The reason we work so hard, that was fine. It got, became softer, wasn't, wasn't finished, wasn't perfect, but I'll take it. The reason we work on horses' hindquarters and crossing the hindquarters so much is because it gives you it gives you the potential to go forward. See, when they cross the hind legs, they're loading up the hind end. They're load. They're, see, they're going to load it up, so it's easy for me to then say, "Come forward." Even though they're turning and they're putting some weight on the front legs, they're still getting under in the rear and loading up the hind. Now think about this. If I could cross that right hind leg, ready, up and over, well, it'd be easy to take that and say, keep going forward. Whoops, right there, forward. There we go. It'd be easy to say, keep going. Keep, uh, cross the hind end, cross the hind end, and keep coming up and forward. And so... Crossing the hind legs, offsetting the haunch, disengaging the rear. It's all the same thing. Some people even say hind quarters under. All the same. What's important about that is it causes the horse to realize, okay, you've got my feet. But because you can do this, it's easy to come forward out of it. One last thing on that note of crossing the hind quarters. It's pretty interesting to think about this. We could also take a horse that's quite nervous, that's up and nervous, and I could cross the hindquarters. I want to get smoother. And I could cross the hindquarters, and I could end at a halt. Why? Brought my life down. So you could use the hindquarters. You can use the hind legs to access a halt or to, to access forward motion, depending on are you asking for, are you lifting, are you leading, are you active, are you moving your feet? Hope that makes sense, but I can use it for both purposes. A little, seeing as she, oh, oh, all of a sudden she sees something and she's looking and chewing as well. I don't know what she sees, but all I know is her life came up.
Saddling a horse, it's really important that you can do this without having to tie your horse up. Let's come up to, out to the middle here. It's really important you can saddle your horse without somebody else holding your horse. Oh, I know what she sees. She sees my daughter going to catch her pony. And so it's important that you don't need to tie the horse. Tying is great. It's a skill you should all have, but you shouldn't depend on it. You should be able to saddle up your horse, lead ropes over my arm, third hand, elbow. If I need it, I can drop it. It's right there. I know she's looking past me. Because she's a horse that I've worked with before, I'll still put the saddle on. I've worked with her before. If this were the first saddling, perhaps she wouldn't be ready right there. In this instance, she was fine. Now, when you come over to the other side, in fact, let me back up a second here. Let me show you something else. We, it's good to put that saddle on and off a few times so with the horse anyway. Let me show you something. You practice saddling, especially Western saddle. English saddle, not, not so much. And I'm just going to see if I can, can encourage her to find me more interesting. I need to impress her a little more in order for her to think that I'm uh, interesting. What if I step over here? Let's put a little a little pressure there. Come forward. There it is again. And she can look. She can look, but she also needs to keep me in mind. If she can look at me with her right eye and ear right there. See that? Right there. I've got the right eye and ear. Her. Good job. Her. Ah, lost it. Watch. Watch this ear. Watch. There it is. I need that. If I have that, she can look to the, her left. Notice the head comes down. Because I'm, I'm redirecting. Eh. Redirecting the mind back to a point. She can look, but she can't forget about me. Keep me in mind. If I were riding and something scared her, I wouldn't want her to forget I was on top of her. We can practice saddling with our saddle pad. Notice how I'm holding it. Notice how I'm holding the pad sort of under my underarm. She's got to keep me in mind as well as I give her saddling demo. I've got to think about a few things at once. I can do it. I might jump around just like she is. Just go for a little walk. At the same time, I could be more interesting by, ready? Open that up. Notice how I go like this. Can you see how I laid that on there? Now, honestly, sometimes we'll go, sometimes we'll go like this. Sometimes we'll go like this. Get them used to all that. But, hold it like this once and just notice how it's easy to have it and I can reach up look at her in the eye place it on her back it might blow off of her should make more of an interesting video for you anyway ready now when I take the saddle hold it like this a Western saddle you hold it like this and you can grab the straps here like when you're carrying it or just grab it here by the skirt I put my left leg near her shoulder. So I'm in line with the shoulder. When I put the saddle up, I'm still looking at her out of my left eye. The other thing is I might ask her, I might uh, offer her a chance to smell it. By the way, I'm still able to tip her to me. See that? Very important. If I reach back here, she could smell it. There it is, ready? Use a nice swing and set it down. See that? Wasn't so bad. You can walk around to the other side and you'd be doing it for the horse. You could also back them up, watch my feet. Watch, watch how much movement I do. I've just put it on her. I watch my feet. Stay where I'm at. Move her over. Now I moved a little bit there, but did you see how I moved her I drop my rear cinch, front cinch, lift up, and pull the pad off of the neck, the wither, to get air space in there. And then notice this. I don't 
have to walk around to her other side, I can just back her up. I'll back her up and bring the forehand through and bring the cinch to me. Why would I do that? Look at it, she's looking and chewing. Note, take note of that. Why would I present it that way? I'd present it that way because she's doing the work for me. She's feeling for me. If I just walk around my horse, tie him up and walk around, they have no say in the matter. They don't really feel like they're contributing. This way, she's feeling for me, see? And I'm getting some groundwork school done as I'm saddling. Now, as I reach down, I rub, I look at her left, I look at her eye out of my left eye. I rub, I use my left hand to grab the cinch. I do not go like this. Why? What do you think? Look, it makes sense, right? Eventually, you might not care, but I do care with this horse because I don't know her as well. Ready? So I rub, I look, look at my rope. Look at how it's laying here, but, but check this out. I can go to my rope multiple ways. I can get to the rope, I can get to her head. All right, so here we go. Reach under with my left hand. You can kind of look up, all right? Give her a little more rope. I'll leave my stirrup. It's fine to put the stirrup up over the saddle. It's a sort of a Guatemala style horn. It's big and the stirrup won't even fit on this big horn. So that's quite all right. At least when I put my saddle away last time, I put it away properly. So it's very easy for me to re-cinch the horse. We'll talk about that later when we put our saddle away. Here we go. I'll loop it through. Now she's standing so well that I, I hate to move her, but I don't know if you can quite see, but I'm just gonna loop it through and I'll go snug. I love that I don't have to tie her up to, to put the saddle on. If you have to tie your horse up, see if we can encourage forward a little, why? Because remember her history. If her history is a tight saddle and she goes, oh, I do not want her sucking back. So I'll ask her to, to come forward a little bit. You, she feels it on her, right? And that's okay. She can, I want her to be aware of it. I don't want her to get triggered anyway. So I want her to be consciously aware of it. I'll go a little more snug and we'll loop it through. Kind of giving her a moment. Everyone's in a hurry. If you don't need to be, at this point, we've got the cinch on her. So you're not going anywhere. Hang, hang in there for a little bit. Sometimes you have to rub on them a little bit. Make sure you're looking at them. Make sure you're looking at their face. Ready? Here we go. Reaching under. Back cinch. I'll just go loose. Loose for now. But this is what I want to do next. I'm off to the side slightly. Forward. Forward a little. And cross the hind legs a little. Let her think. Let's give her a little time to, to think. She's, she's relaxing. Look at that. And I'll say, come on now. Come on now. I'm always trying to draw them in. So long as I can drive them back equally as well as I can draw them in. Some of you that hand feed your horses and, and rub your horses and love on your horses, they come in, they draw in, but they don't drive back. That's not good. She drives back. I have a balance. I have a pretty good balance with her. Forward, move the hind. Oh, we lost. The There's the hind leg. All right, here we go. Let's bring her up here. Now, I'd like to, I'd like to tighten up that saddle. One, one more time here right now, and I actually like three. If I can do it in three increments, that that's great. Now, probably hard to see. Probably hard to see this. Sometimes I'll just sort of real lightly just put a little, I don't just pull up, but a little, sometimes I'll just kind of wiggle it up. Another technique is to watch their breathing. And when they exhale, you lift a little. It works too. Sometimes through feel, you'll naturally do that anyway. You'll get smoother working around horses. The cinch strap on this saddle is quite long, so use your keeper up here. I will tighten up the back cinch a little bit more on her. Now, word of caution, FYI, sometimes 
A snug back cinch? Oh, let's go forward, not backwards. Sometimes a snug back cinch feels better to a horse. Or a looser back cinch. We don't want the back cinch hanging down so loose that if they were to take their hind legs and kick at flies that they'd put a hind leg through. But for, for some horses, it's much better to have it loose at first. Now, obviously she's a training horse. It's sort of at a place where it's not really that long. It's not hanging down that far, but it's not really snug either. Be careful of that because all of a sudden if they jump and they breathe in, they expand the rib cage, they hit the back cinch, and guess what? You might trigger bucking. Let's go forward. Keep my mind in the game here. Forward on. Good, and now bring her back to me, changing direction. Now I'll tell you, that saddle's not fully tightened. Remember, we want at least three increments. Three adjustments, and not as hard as you can each time. You're just spacing out the saddle. Very good right here. Look at how nice she's stopping and she's feeling for me. We're just trying to space out the adjustments in at least three or, or even four increments. I'm going to go a little tighter on the back cinch. I will go more snug on the, the front cinch. Encourage, step forward. I'm tall, I'm leading. Let's put a little more motion. What about bringing her life up and down? I'm gonna think about moving over here a little bit and moving my feet, bring her life up. And down and up, I'll get tall. I watch the whole horse, but watch.